So I was just cruising around Charleston one evening looking for some interesting things to film. It was actually kind of sunny and it wasn't all windy and nasty out. The prior night I took a drive, but it was really cold, like 10 degrees. I was like, is the riffraff inside because of the weather? Because I heard all these bad things about druggies and homeless people all over Charleston. Where was all of that? And then I turned a corner and headed down Washington Street. And I was like, oh, there it is. Okay, I get it now. I saw a lot of sketchy that night in Charleston. It was day five on the Appalachian winter adventure. And for the first time on the trip, the skies parted. The gray clouds broke as if West Virginia was saying, Nick, here's Charleston with the covers off. And after being here for a few days, I wondered how bad would the place look had the skies not been blue. For the next few videos, we'll see poverty and drugs and places that need a lot of help. I'll try to point out the good here, but it's West Virginia. From the surface, good can be kind of hard to identify. Charleston's the capital of the state, and you could say the capital of Appalachia. And if this is the head honcho for Appalachia land, that says a lot about the rest of Appalachia. This is Chemical Valley. It's a big deal in these parts. It's where a bunch of chemical engineers make some very hard to pronounce products. Stuff like fluoropolymers and petrochemicals and fluoroelastomers. Things that are very important, I guess. There's also oil refineries and coal plants in the area too. As you may know, industries like this have been the backbone of the West Virginia economy forever now. These are some of the state's best paying jobs that don't take a high school education. All these mechanics and pipe layers and electricians, very reputable careers. We're right outside the state capital of Charleston. For a lot of people here, this is how they make their living. But these industries aren't as big as they once were. Technology has killed a lot of this as has overseas competition. And coal, well, we all know what happened to the coal industry. But even though there's some great jobs here, a lot of people in Charleston won't or can't take part in them. Charleston has 50,000 people and it's definitely not thriving here. Look at this graph. At its peak, there were 85,000 people in town. <laughs> At this rate, there will be zero people here by the end of the century. But I don't think everyone's going to leave. But it's certainly not a good trend. One in five people here lives in poverty. And if I'm going to judge, I'd say half the place looks like it's close to poverty. It just feels stagnant, like it's managing to hang on. In case you haven't heard, there's more people leaving West Virginia than any other state. It's now the only state to have less people now than it did in 1950. If you drive around Charleston long enough, you can see why it has a bad reputation and why people would maybe want to leave. We're on the east side now, just a couple miles from downtown. A lot of Charleston's dingy and depressing like this. Some neighborhoods are just straight up beat down. And blight attracts crime. They say crime here is only bad on the west side, the east side, and parts of downtown. <laughs> Isn't that everywhere then? I hear it's too small of a city for big city policing, but it's too big for small town cops. I didn't feel at all threatened here though. It's not nearly as bad as most shitholes I've been to. I think most of the crimes are robberies, but there's a lot of those. 
people's mail get stolen, and cars and homes get broken into a lot. And a lot of the thefts are drug-related. Drugs are a big problem here, mister. I asked some people in town, so how bad is the drug problem here? <laughs> I got a lot of feedback. I heard about people ODing inside of bars and then getting pissed off when they get Narcaned. Like, hey, you ruined my buzz. I can't get high again until tomorrow. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Jesus. It's kind of a cycle here. People can't get jobs because they're high, but they don't want to work because they're high. Some of the most desperate people here, they sell off their welfare money for materials to make cheap drugs and then sell those and then use that to buy a gun and then use that to get more money to make more drugs. And that takes a lot of planning. Although you can't put those skills on a resume, can you? How has drugs impacted this community? Because I hear it's just a shit show with some of these people out here. Drugs is a heavy factor here. Um, you got a lot of people that's OD'd and died from the uh, fentanyl and the other type of drugs that is um, that they're on and doing. But that doesn't say one person ruins it for everybody because not everybody's on it. But um, it's it's very well on our streets and has taken a lot of lives from. Um, the younger ones, as, just as well as the older ones that's, that's here in Charleston and the surrounding areas that's surrounding us. I wonder if they're going to tear down a lot of this one day. I suppose there's potential. Some of these homes just need to have somebody move in and fix the place up, take care of the weeds and fix the roads and all. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Not unless suddenly this place becomes really popular. And the only reason that's going to happen is if they bring in a bunch of high paying jobs. Plus, these neighborhoods just aren't very family friendly. Take away the fallen down and the drug users. They're still not very functional. Middle class families need garages and big yards. And you can't build those along steep hillsides like this. But it is cheap, I have to say. The average home price here is $160,000. And as I always tell you, we complain about affordability, but there's lots of affordable here. It's better than living on the streets. This is the cheapest home in town. It can be yours for only $16,000. I know. Even though the homes are so cheap, West Virginia has been losing 10,000 people a year, and that seems to be accelerating. The state's reputation for poverty, drugs, crime, no jobs, and pollution doesn't help. And it's definitely not a good sign when most of the kids graduate college in this state and then leave for good. They're trying to get more people to move here. You can get $20,000 in cash and other incentives if you're a remote worker and you take root in this state. Supposedly, lots of people have already applied. I don't know if the program's worked or not, and... I don't know if anyone's actually taken them up on the offer, but there's an offer. Charleston isn't entirely a blue collar community. There's a decent amount of white collar stuff going on in town. And of course, this is the capital of the state, so there's going to be plenty of government jobs under that there big gold dome. It's a liberal city in a very red state. Sort of a laid back, all kinds are welcome kind of place. My first impression of the city is the downtown area. There's about an eight by eight block area in the heart of downtown that's actually really nice and clean. There's a lot of places to get food and socialize and shop. There's arts and markets downtown. They take pride in their new library and their new baseball stadium and in their symphony Yes, West Virginia has a symphony, and it's not just banjo music. And there's outdoorsy stuff all over. Can't say that about most of our big cities. Plus, Charleston has the world's biggest tape ball, or one of the world's biggest tape balls, I think. 
That's cool, I guess. But overall, downtown Charleston's kind of average. I saw some shady people wandering around, and there's lots of homeless people here, but I think they shoo them along because you don't see too many of them in this part of town. But drive along some of the shadier parts of town, and it's bad, bad news. Here's Washington Avenue again. I just drove around this part of town for about an hour just before dark one night. I saw a lot of what I would assume are druggies wandering around. A lot of people were screaming or staggering or just looked miserable. There aren't many mental hospitals around, so the people are left to their own thoughts. That sucks. You could do a whole video about the drug use here. It's bad, like really bad. It's mostly pain pills and injection drugs. It's such a crisis, there's dirty needle amnesty boxes in town. Some people volunteer to hand out Narcan on the streets. And when they put on these health fairs, there will be hundreds of people showing up to get clean needles and free Narcan. I heard they hand out a thousand free Narcan units in a two-hour period. Damn. It isn't just the heroin killing people. They're sharing needles so much that Charleston's the nation's worst place for HIV rates. There's more HIV here per capita than in New York City. The CDC called Charleston's HIV outbreak the most concerning in the country and said it could get a lot worse. God. There's cheap places to crash all over this area, so Charleston's tragedy isn't an affordability problem. It's a drug problem. It's a I don't want to work problem. There's factories all over here, so if folks could clean up, they'd be off the streets in a week but they won't do it. I'm sure there'd be way more people on the streets here if it wasn't so damn cold six months a year. Plus, there just aren't a lot of resources for the homeless. Some churches will help a little bit, but the city's not handing out tents and cigarettes and cash like they do in California. It, it's, you know, it's an all right place to be. It's what you make out of it. Anywhere you go, you got the low-income people that um, don't ha aren't a fortunate enough to have a higher quality home you got the low income apartment people you got the uh, more wealthier side on on down in Charleston a little more ways um, but it's overall it's a good place to be especially if you're older in life and you just want to settle down and and be more relaxed and whatever it's not so much like the city as far as um, sirens all day long uh, a bunch of people that it's just uh, good old country people trying to make a good hard living um, other than that there's not a lot of big fancy jobs down here but there's enough to make a living to get by to pay your bills on if if you're willing to work and do the work to to survive and live in this type of uh, state um, me personally I don't think it's for somebody young that wants to be on the go all the time with a lot of stuff to do this wouldn't be the right area for you. But far as relax wise, wanting to be laid back, pay your bills and do what you got to do to survive, you can, you can manage it. There's some good neighborhoods in town. This is a neighborhood across the river, just a little bit from downtown, a place they call South Hills. Homes here are anywhere between 250K and 700K. I know, right? Look at some of these homes up here. Where else can you get some old historical looking home with a big old yard in the hillsides for under 600 k This one here sold for 95000 not too long ago. I know, right? These people over here in South Hills have some really nice things in their little Bridge Street village. They have a fancy coffee shop and a very posh Walgreens that probably isn't schlepping out pain pills. And look, they have a ooh la Lucy, ooh la awesome. But I didn't hang out in the fancy parts of town. Come on now. I needed to see the other side of Charleston. I began the first night trying to wander around downtown, but there were two problems. One, every place was packed. It was a Friday night and it was happy hour, so there really wasn't a place to really just walk in and sit down. And it was freaking cold. 
like 10 degrees and windy cold. <sighs> oh my God, it is cold now. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie. It's like 12 degrees and windy. <sighs> Doing this for you guys. So instead I took a drive to visit the area dive bars because that's how you see the real Charleston people. I went to Wild Willie's on the West End. Totally my kind of place. They sell chips out of the bag and everything. Folks inside here are just regular Americans doing their regular American thing. You know, drinking beer and socializing and smoking. They have these gaming machines that probably take a lot of paychecks and make the poverty in town worse. I hear there's sketchy people in and out of here all night long. That's too bad. I went to this amazing bar on the end of town called Buck's Place. It's in the fading part of town on the west side. I pulled up and I was like, is this place even open? They are, for now. That's Buck, right there. He's had this bar for more than 40 years now. He has a big, soft handshake. I love the place. I mean, look at those beer prices. $2.25 for a bottle of Suds? Fox News on TV? A pool table on an old linoleum floor? I was like, Buck, where's everyone at? This place should be packed. Well, Buck told me that most of the regulars have died off. And then he showed me a notebook with more than 150 names of people that were dead. Buck said the druggies in town don't like to leave the house much. So they don't come in. He also told me there's only one way to go with drugs, and it is down. Buck's a wise man. I played some Hank Williams. Buck approved. I like Buck a lot. Do you think Buck used to be a boxer? I don't know, Mappy. Maybe he was. Wouldn't surprise me. How was your pepperoni roll? Hmm... I also stumbled into a place called The Empty Glass, which I was told was the premier live music venue in the whole state. What? This place? That's what the bartender said. She also told me all sorts of well-known live acts have played that very stage. I like the music. They say Charleston, West Virginia is 20 years behind the times. To me, it kind of looks like a lot of other struggling American cities that couldn't keep up. They too have a slowly dying mall. People just don't want to leave the house anymore. The coal plants in the area are slowly fading away. We've changed the way we get our energy. The old empty barges go up and down the river along downtown. That's kind of symbolic too. I mean, all over town are examples of old and rotting. Signs that a well-built, once rich, once important city is trying to just keep its head above water. And then there's old Buck. Buck knows about fading away. He's barely hanging on himself. He told me more and more now. He's thinking about selling this place and leaving town like the rest of them. I hope he doesn't, but I wouldn't blame him. There's people who really care in town, and a lot of them are trying to turn things around. But as they try to climb out of the hole they're in, it seems like the hole's fallen down all around them. But this is nothing. The next few days in West Virginia would prove to be an up-close glimpse at just how far things have fallen here. The holes I found in rural mountain town West Virginia are some of the deepest in the country. What do you think about, what's the future of Charleston? What do you think the city has uh, coming up? I mean, me personally, I think they got overall good plans um, for what they're intending on their commission board to install, to bring more travelers and out-of-state people to Charleston. It's just with the consistency of it mainly is what it based on. How consistent is it? Is it tough to find jobs around here? It, like I said, you, you just go back to, to that. It's uh, really about 
how how you want to live and, and how the surroundings that's around you i mean if if you're if you want to work there's work to be done if you don't then there's not i mean that that's up to whoever they are wherever they go it's what you make out of it mm -hmm. west virginia it's a great place man there's good people it's beautiful it's cheap it's it's not crowded and sh you know like you get in all the places there's some stereotypes of the state it's actually not that bad a place huh to me no it's my hometown so i uh I'm I'm not going to say that West Virginia is is a is a bad place because that's my hometown. That's where I'm. You know, I've been to other states and I've always come right back to West Virginia. But to me, um, I think it's an overall it's an overall good good place. I mean, um, they are things to do. You got the New River Gorge and you got um, other things that you can go out and do air tour boat rides the the history between the coal and the hatfield and the mccoys and and all that there's a lot of good things that you can do that people hasn't got to see just about west virginia and charleston you just have to dig a little deeper into it and you can tell that charleston was once a an, an important wealthy city and, and it is not currently as important as it once was um, what is it about what happened that changed Charleston's fortune a little bit? I think part of it is we lost some large industries. Uh, the chemical industry is, is not nearly what it used to be around here. Uh, there was some glass uh, over in Kanawha City where the Kanawha Mall is. That used to be a huge uh, glass factory over there. Lots and lots and lots of, uh, of stacks with the company when they were for manufacturing glass. Um, just population decline in general in the state. The, the Eastern Panhandle area has been growing a lot because of the Washington, Baltimore area, but over here, yeah, not quite as much. Mm -hmm. Just, I, I'd imagine it's just a loss of jobs is the, the main reason. Some of that, just an aging population. A lot of our younger people go out of state, you know, pursuing degrees and things sometimes, and then don't end up coming back because the jobs aren't there. Mm -hmm. yeah i talked to kids in morgantown and they they were like we're you know the local kids i think half of wvu is in-state students and they said that like 90 percent of them like take off and never come back to west virginia again that, I, that may be i don't know um mm -hmm. but yeah there's we we do have a lot of, of in-state students who go to morgantown up to wvu or go over to huntington to marshall um mm -hmm. and then we have our, our other smaller schools but a, a lot of them, they, they will find job opportunities out of state. And so they, they go ahead and take advantage of that and move. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest challenges you think Charleston has right now? I think it's just partly um, deciding how we're going to deal with some of these issues, like the, the closing of so many things and trying to attract in new jobs. You know, as the state capital, there's always going to be a certain amount of of jobs generated by that and by other uh, businesses that want to be here around the capital. But I, I think, you know, they're trying to figure out what our direction is going to be. How can we tap into some of the tourism that's going on through the ATV trails down in southern West Virginia or through all the people who are coming up to the New River Gorge Park? Um, how can we tap into that, and bring some of those people into the Charleston area for a few days? Mm hmm. Do you have any idea? Do you know any of the plans that they're talking about to to um, help Charleston um, not decline with population and everything? Are they are there plans on types of jobs or are they just trying to figure out? Um, well, I, I know there's some discussion right now uh, with our our mall, the town center mall downtown, which used to have four anchor stores and currently has one. Um, about taking part of that, either some of the store area or some of the parking garage area and building, I think, a complex to be able to do water sports because we really don't have a lot of pools and things in the area for our local swim teams. Uh, the University of Charleston used to have a pool and I know some of the high schools would practice over there and I don't believe, I don't know if they've closed it entirely or they've just closed it to everybody except University of Charleston students. So. Right now, I'm not so sure that the y, uh, YMCA may not be the only place that the, the students have for practice. So they've been talking about trying to bring in an aquatic center. We've done a lot in recent years with trying to attract soccer tournaments. And so uh, they've built a nice area out um, 
in Institute, between Dunbar and Institute, the Shawnee Sports Complex, it's been bringing in tournaments and things of that nature. So they're, they're trying different approaches here in the greater Kanawha Valley to, to attract people to come to the area for various reasons. Mm -hmm. You're an archivist, so you're historical, you're the, like a historian it, sort of, right? Like, I mean, that's your, that's your passion is history? Yeah, I, I have a, ma a bachelor's and a master's in history, yes. Okay. Can you um, tell me the, about the, the West Virginia's, um, I guess, where West Virginia, when West Virginia was at its best and compare that to what's going on now? So I, I'd imagine in the 50s and 60s, there, there was a lot of money in the state with all the industry and, and things were going very well. Yes, I think 1950 was when we peaked at a little over 2 million people for population. And at that point, I believe we had six representatives in the U.S. House. Uh, we just went down to two with the last election. And so, uh, but back then you had an awful lot of people employed in the coal industry, in the uh, chemical industry here in the Valley. Oil and gas has been a big thing over the years. And so, a lot of those jobs, you know, coal has gotten more mechanized. And so you can still produce a great amount of coal, but you need fewer people to do it. Uh, the chemical industries, a lot of them have moved on. As I say, the glass industries pretty much left this area. And so we've seen that decline. I, I think around 1950, that probably was our peak of population. Hmm. Yeah, because I mean, even in the 80s, West Virginia was like hardcore Democrat, they were a very um, important state, and then and then they switched to Republican, and then like they're losing office, and it's like, what do they got to do to turn things around? You know? Yeah, we we had long term folks there in Washington in the Senate, and uh, though the state has seen a shift, I think now Senator Manchin is the only statewide Democrat uh, in office. Everyone else on both the federal and the state levels are Republicans, mm -hmm. so. It's, it's been a change. The legislature has made a shift over. Um, it's, it's just kind of one of those cycles. It'll cycle back the other direction at some point, I imagine. Let's talk about good things in Charleston. What, what's good about Charleston? What's Charleston doing right? Why do you like it? Why does everybody like, like living there? What, what, what's some good stuff? Well, there are a lot of activities to participate in, and I will admit I don't take uh, as much advantage as, as someone probably uh, you know younger than I, but Sternwheel Regatta came back this past year for the first time in several years, which uh, I don't think it's quite as lengthy as it used to be. It seems like it used to be around a two week festival, but it was centered around the river. Uh, you had a lot of you had boat races. You had a lot of concerts down on the river, uh, food events, all types of, of those types of things. Parades um, was just a fascinating thing. When I actually came and interviewed for my job, I had missed it by about a week. And everyone there at the archives was like, man, it's too bad you couldn't have been here a week ago for, for regatta. But it just was the way that it had worked out. But that has come back. Uh, we've got hiking and biking trails in town. They're really trying to get people to, to get outside, enjoy things. They've built um, basically a, a stage area down on the river for concerts. In the summer, they'll have concerts every Friday night. Uh, again, they'll have different events downtown like that. So, you know, trying to bring people in with that, you have uh, different sporting events going on. They've done a huge renovation of the Civic Center, uh, which is now called the West Virginia Charleston Coliseum and Convention Bureau, I believe, or Convention Center. But they've done a lot of renovations for that to be able to host more events and, um, you know, just trying to, to get people to come come downtown after work. There's an art walk, uh, I think one Thursday night a month where people can go and tour different uh, galleries and things, look at art, try and uh, take advantage of some of the restaurants and things to eat at downtown. So just a lot of activities like that to appeal to, to folks, different interests. Yeah. I talk to people all the time. I've seen a lot of the country. Everybody says they want affordable, um, safe, um, quiet space, nature, they don't have to be tied to the desk anymore. And I'm telling you, I think West Virginia is going to be the last um, affordable place to live in the country at a certain point. So you might get the you might get the boom from all the people that just want space and affordable. And you're, you're so close to being able to go out and do all kinds of outdoor activities. I mean, we're about an hour, hour and a half from the New River Gorge. 
Um, I have a coworker who loves to go rock climbing and he goes all over the place uh, to do that on weekends with friends. We're a half an hour from Kanawha State Forest, where if you want to go out hiking in the woods and things, you can go out to the forest there. We have a lot of parks and things around the state, but, um, you know, and then of course there are the rivers. You can get out uh, up where I am in the Elkview area, they're trying to promote more kayaking. Whether you bring your own or you, you rent a kayak up in Clendenin, which is about 10 miles north of me, uh, and, and you know, just drift down the river for the day. So they're trying to, to appeal to all those different types of interests that people might have. Yeah, I'm hearing that more and more. I spent nine days in the state and mm -hmm. I kept hearing tourism is going to be our one thing that we have an advantage in that, that, yes. that, that we can actually kind of try to push to get people to come. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe that's that's going to be the thing to get the, the gears going here. It's, it's a beautiful place. I've been to many of the state parks around the state and we just have some gorgeous scenery. And if you want to be up in the mountains, it's not that far to get to it. If you're happier down here more towards the rivers, you know, the Ohio is only an hour away in Huntington. There are just all kinds of things you can do. Good. Well, I hope that happens. It, I hope so, too. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.